While there are many weapons to choose from in Bloodborne PvP, the Burial Blade has always been my favorite, and I've used it consistently over the last several years. I've been working on this video for quite a while, gathering footage old and new, and some frame data to help inform and teach how to better utilize this weapon. I've used this weapon for years, and after seeing very few people really use it that well, I've decided to make a video on this. So in this video, I will cover and showcase the Barrow Blades moveset, pros and cons, as well as advice for matchups against other weapons. The Burial Blade is a very well-rounded weapon. While not perfect, it surely is underrated due to its learning curve and unique applications. First, we will cover the one-handed form of the weapon, easily the most simple and effective form to use. You can kind of think of this form as a primitive saw, as it is functionally very similar to a saw spear or a saw cleaver, given its fast movement and relatively high DPS. Note that this does not mean it is as effective as the Saw Twins, however, we will cover that later in the video. Your bread and butter for this form will be the first two neutral R1s, as they are fast, horizontal swings. The first R1 hitbox activates at frame 14, while the second R1 activates at frame 10. This scissor motion is quite deadly. The second R1 being just as fast as the Trick Rider Polosh R1 makes it an extremely useful move, which would generally encourage you to immediately R1 after your first strike is landed, as the second R1 is very low risk to utilize. However, the same cannot be said for any of the R1s following the second R1, as the third R1 is a vertical strike. Its hitbox activates at frame 15. Vertical strikes in Bloodborne are generally much less effective than horizontal strikes due to covering less area and a higher chance of whiffing. In conclusion, using anything past the first two neutral R1s is generally not advisable to do regularly. As an occasional mix-up, it could prove useful though. The second best feature of the one-handed burial blade is the dash attacks, otherwise known as quick step attacks. These provide much needed mobility to the weapon. The forward dash R1 is very straightforward, as it is designed to close the distance or counter parry fishing attempts. The follow up R1 to the forward or right hand side dash attack will revert you to the second R1 for the next swing, which is amazing for making up for whiffed attacks. The two side dashes and the back dashes cover great distances, making them perfect for surprise attacks and counter strikes. These attacks can also be unlocked and pre-aimed as soon as the dash is started, allowing for great opportunities to catch opponents as they try to dash behind you. My personal favorite application is Punishing Beast Roar, as the side dash R1s, and especially the back dash R1s, can provide adequate distance to avoid the Beast Roar knockback, but still be in range to counter swing and strike the opponent. This is nothing to underestimate or underutilize, as it could most certainly gain you the pressure or killing blow you need on your opponent. The running R1 can be nice for chase downs and can follow up into a neutral second R1. Although the Burial Blade can also use dash attacks for this same purpose. The running R2 is best used after parry and will true combo into an R1 under those conditions, making it a nice alternative to a repost or R1 burrito repost on long distance parries. The tap R2, or uncharge R2 attack, is a vertical strike. Not very practical, however, I find that the best application for this attack is free aiming the strike to catch your opponent off guard, especially if they are dedicated to a move such as healing with a vial or dashing in. 
The charged R2 is pretty much what you would expect from a fast weapon charge attack. However, because it is a horizontal swing, this makes it better at catching opponents in close proximity to you. The backstep attacks and the jump attack for this one-handed mode are not very useful and the applications of such are dubious at best, so I will not be discussing them in this video. Now we will be covering the more complicated part of the weapon, the tricked mode. This is where most of the learning curve of the weapon is required. We will first start with the light attacks. The first R1 in the chain is very awkward, as it is a vertical strike that often whips opponents at point blank. However, if framed, this attack becomes much more effective for catching opponents at odd angles. My favorite application is to catch people who think they have a safe heal, as I am two-handing the weapon. This attack also has some very nice hyper armor, which can come in handy in unexpected moments. The major downside of this attack, however, is that it often whiffs when not freehand, and is quite easy to parry. The follow-up R1s to the two-hand burial blade are much more practical, as they swing horizontally in wide sweeps. This allows them to catch players much more efficiently, and allows for great pseudo-combo potential, as the follow-up R1 chain begins after any attack, such as R2s, dash R1, L2s, running R1s, and side dash attacks. The dash R1 and the back dash R1 can be useful as a quick surprise attack. It can often whiff if not used properly. However, I find this attack to be great for keeping up aggression and sometimes delivering the final blow against your opponent. The running R1 is great for setting up pseudo combos for the burial blade, such as running R1 into R2 or running R1 into R1. This attack gives the burial blade so much pseudo combo potential, and is part of what makes being a successful two hand burial blade user. The running R1 is not risk free, however, as opponents will often attempt to parry this attack, so it is often best to attempt this unlocked and unpredictably. I have found great success in this method, and it has allowed me to pull off some truly amazing pseudo combos. The side dash R1s give the two handed burial blades some much needed momentum based attacks. The right and left side dash attacks swipe horizontally. These attacks are great for closing the distance to get some quick damage in. You can use these in a similar fashion as the one hand burial blade side dash attacks, and are also great for punishing beast rolls. The backstep R1, while situational, has much more practical use than your typical backstep R1 attack. It is quite good for when you outspace an opponent, or for catching opponents coming out of a dash. It also has opportunities for pseudo combo potential. However, it being a backstep attack makes it more susceptible to being parried, due to it being telegraphed. So, it is best used sparingly and intelligently. While the backstep R2 I find much less practical, I do find that it does have decent pseudo combo potential and isn't bad for the occasional mix up. The R2 is arguably the best attack on the two-handed burial blade. Aside from having great pseudo-combo potential following a running R1, it also has good hype armor, 
and dash catch potential, as you can tap or hold the R2 for mix-ups. This attack also has great potential for unlock play. Learning to unlock and relock with this attack will increase your effectiveness and win rate with this weapon. R2-R2 and R2-R1 are often great pseudo combos for dash catching and punishing over aggression. Both L1 transform and untransform attacks while having a lot of potential are often very risky to use, as they are very easy to parry. I often try to utilize these attacks when I am certain I will not be parried, and also when I am sure I will outspace or outhyper my opponent's current attack. L2 attacks and the jump attack are extremely situational. I often only use these as mix-ups. The two-hand charge R2, while extremely stylish, is not something I recommend using often, as it does not provide much damage and has a very high stamina cost. However, as an occasional mix-up, it can prove useful. Now we will move on to the final segment of the video, the matchups. While Burial Blade is a fairly well-rounded weapon, it has much better weapons to compete against. However, it can stand its ground versus these weapons, if used properly. Burial Blade vs. Saw Spear can be a pretty rough matchup, as Untricked Saw Spear has a 3 frame advantage over the Untricked Burial Blade. This can make approaching and attacking with neutral attacks a bit risky, as Saw Spear will always have the speed and range advantage over you. The best tactics to use versus a saw spear while using the burial blade is to lean into the one-handed form side, forward, and back dash attacks, as these can better compete versus the saw spear's neutral attacks via outspacing and avoiding their strikes. The neutral R1-R1 on the burial blade are also effective, of course. However, you will not be able to challenge them if you swing at the same time or later than them, as they have the frame advantage. The Burial Blade can also make use of its trick mode versus the Saw Spear, 
as you can use the type armor and range to your advantage. However, you will still want to lean into your untrick mode versus higher tier weapons as they have the advantage of speed and keeping their firearm in use at all times. Burial Blade vs. Sog Cleaver I don't have too much to add to other than its reduced range makes it easier for the Burial Blade to contend with, although the same concerns and tips apply to this matchup as well. Burial Blade vs. Rider Flash can be a very rough matchup, as the Tricked Rider has a 4 frame advantage over the untricked Burial Blade, and an additional bonus of a firearm attached to the weapon. You'll combat the Rider in a similar fashion to the Saw Twins, however I feel this matchup can be even more troublesome at times, as the Rider's speed and firearm attachment make it very formidable. I recommend leaning fully into the untricked mode versus this weapon. While the hyper armor and range of the tricked burial blade can still be useful, the risk of parry is much higher. Burial blade versus the beast in our safe, I find to be an easier matchup as far as neutral game is concerned, which the burial blade user can use to their advantage. While safe is much more of a momentum based weapon, the burial blade has the perks of having strong neutral attacks and some momentum based attacks as well, such as the dash attacks, which can help compete versus the safe style of combat. Make no mistake though, the safe is still a very formidable weapon in the right hands, especially if the opponent plays into all of what the safe excels at. The safe does have the advantage of hyper armor that can outcompete the burial blade's trick mode on an embarrassing level. You will want to lean into the untricked form in this matchup on most occasions. The safe accomplishes all of the tricked burial blade's features, but with more hyper armor and with the advantage of a parry tool at all times. You can apply what you've learned about these matchups versus other matchups as well, such as weapons that may have better hyper armor and speed. Weapons like Whirligig, Bloodletter, and Cost Parasite often make two-hand burial blade use difficult, as they can outcompete your own range and hyper armor. So oftentimes you'll want to lean into the one-hand form of your weapon.
Should you choose to use the two-handed form of the Burial Blade versus Deems matchups, you will want to initiate stun with a running R1 to gain an opening and stun priority to set up a super combo. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you found some use in this video. I know this video released much later than I wanted, but I'm glad I finished it before Elden Ring. Take care everyone. I love you all.